So tonight, guys, we are going to do Power BI, learn to walk on water in a sea of data. Now, I've done this uh, talk after using, uh, we've been using this for a little while. I just wrote this talk uh, with a couple of guys in the office um, for an Auckland conference. And um, essentially, I think Power BI is probably one of the best things to come out of Microsoft for ages and ages. I'm trying to think of something comparable. I don't know if .NET is a fair comparison, but since it is a big, it's a big initiative for data, we've kind of resorted to doing a lot of data in Excel with extensions from you know, the SQL team and other things. We've, we've been trying to get by on reporting services without Microsoft updating reporting services for a while. So I can't tell you how blown away I was by the first you know, few days of using this. I could say the first half an hour of using it. But um, we've basically been using this on a, a series of projects now and we've had a great, um, it, a, a, it's got a lot of promise. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through a whole series of scenarios tonight from the beginning power user, from the beginning knowledge user to the power user to the advanced developer. And, Look, it's not um, completely baked, it's brand new. It's, um, it's still hot out of the oven, um, but they're shipping new features. It seems to be every three weeks or four weeks. There, there's a continual cadence of great features coming out. So uh, it's seeing, seeing good. So anyway, you'll see if you like it tonight. Um, this is me. I did not do this slide, but um, uh, when I didn't steal a pregnant lady's chocolate either. I didn't know she was pregnant. All right, so here is, <laughs> here is a, uh, here's the summary of what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk through a little bit of history of where we've come from. I wanna tell you about the additions because the way Microsoft is selling this is very different from anything I've seen. I wanna just give you the up and running experience of the knowledge worker and then the power user and then the developer. So, and then I wanna talk about the roadmap because Microsoft have got a bit of cleaning up to do um, with all this stuff they've released. So this is how I see the history. We started off in the very early days with Excel. And you know, we had different apps and when, back in 87, anyone around back in 87 when we were just using Excel? No, just, uh, just Vaughan. And uh, the popular one we, when we switched to VB um, was uh, Crystal. Crystal was popular and then we got Access and that was the best reporting engine we'd seen at that point in time. It's very simple to do and people, you could grab data from anywhere because it had ODBC. And then this thing, which we didn't even notice back then, this R programming language was created by um, some of these um, uh, Kiwis. Kiwis, they uh, maybe need to count a lot of sheep or do statistical analysis. And they created this R programming language and I didn't even notice it. Then, um, like if you think about back then, that was a long, long time ago. That was um, uh, not long, uh, you know, the, the thing I can remember in that period of time was Martin Bryant and when we, uh, it was that long ago and we had our guns banned in Australia uh, like a couple of weeks later, which hopefully uh, the Americans will learn about this eventually. So I just, uh, I just thought I'd just mention how long ago this was. Now in SQL Server 7 was released with OLAP cubes and we had to learn MDX and not many people actually got a handle on that. Who got a handle on MDX? One guy out of a room, so that's not good. Um, then they introduced data mining and they renamed it to Analysis Services in 2000. Then we got .NET in 2001. 2004, they released an update to SQL Server 2000 to give us reporting services. It's called a web release, the first time we'd come across that. And we learned about these things called RDLs and then it was shipped in the SQL 2005 product. And that was great. I remember doing a presentation here when it rele was released and we had um, about 400 people in here and we had four of these rooms stacked up against each other. It was very, very popular. You were here? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that was a um, huge release. Everyone was really excited to get a, a report writer in the browser. Thank goodness. And it was great. So that was 10 years ago. We um, then got Performance Point 2007. And if you, uh, there was also this other company that started called Revolution Analytics and they were doing 
just specializing in making this programming language R better. Okay? And then in 2010, we got Performance Point for SharePoint. And um, uh, then uh, we got Power Pivot come out. And Power Pivot, um, uh, it was an Excel add in, but it wasn't done by the Office team. It was done by the um, SQL team. And that was the first time we'd seen something called a tabular data model instead of the cubes. And we got to learn this programming language called DAX. And then Mike's, companies like Telerik started noticing that Microsoft weren't improving reporting services. They released their own things, so did some other companies. And our customers started asking for the reports being done in Telerik reports instead of uh, reporting services, which is a damn shame. And then we started getting all these other cool things in 2012. Um, we got uh, analysis services tabular, so, the, so that team, the SQL team put it into, onto the server, which obviously meant things were way more scalable now. Uh, we got PowerView, which was uh, on the web using Silverlight, um, and that was for SharePoint enterprise people. We got integrated mode for SQL reporting services. Um, and we got um, Power Query for Excel, we got Power Pivot, Power Map, and we got this beautiful um, Q&A thing on Office 365 and this was a natural language you could say show me the number of um, products in our database you know that type of thing you could write natural and it's pretty cool and there was this data management gateway that was uh, released by Microsoft to allow you to put your on-premise SQL data into Office 365 and then there was data Zen. so I, I hopefully you're getting a bit of this data Zen was just a little company sorry Yes, it was Component Art who were doing grids, and then they, yes, very well spotted, Marvin. Um, uh, yeah, there was a company just doing grids, like uh, Telerik grids, but they switched to be doing um, this BI reporting tool. And they were, I think they're uh, in Canada or Chicago or somewhere around there. Um, and they're doing a good job too. So, 2005, Power BI comes out, um, and they have a new file extension called a .pbix. They acquire DataZen and they acquire Revolution Analytics. So they're doing a bit of purchasing here, getting serious. Uh, like um, what's, they're getting really serious in this uh, BI. They, they've kind of worked out this is, there's a lot of money to be made here. They have a huge team on this. That, you know, you, I installed it and thought, wow, this is good. And then I do some investigation. There is 280 people in this team. Microsoft are taking this BI strategy pretty seriously. Um, they've got this Azure Machine Learning stuff, and that has R built in, okay? And now we'll come, we'll come to all this, but hopefully this gives you a, um, an understanding of where we've come, and a lot of these things are evolving, and we now have a lot of choice, but everything's rolling into this Power BI strategy. And when you acquire a lot of companies like they've done, they've got some cleaning up to do, and I want to talk about that. Um, SQL RS gets um, some serious love. And you will see um, a whole lot of investment in the reporting services stuff, which we could spend a bit of time on as well. I'll just mention a couple of big ticket items tonight. But uh, SQL Server itself has R integration baked in. Okay, so um, there's a lot of modeling and, and learning that you can do. All right, now, in the old days, Microsoft were telling us that the BI that we should be using, all the BI strategy, that's, you need SharePoint for your, for your BI stuff. So grab SharePoint, that's kind of our reporting platform. I always thought that those guys were unusual, unusual friends. Um, but what Microsoft are going to be saying now, I expect, is they're not friends anymore. You'll take all the BI stuff out of SharePoint and, and the reporting story will be Power BI. Okay, so I just want to mention to you, R, uh, because I mentioned it a few times, you don't really need to know any of this at this point in time, but when you want to extend any of this learning stuff or write a lot of advanced methods, um, this little program, this, um, new, new, this Kiwi programming language, which is now purchased by Microsoft and included in the product, is, um, you know, has a lot of history among statisticians. It's the global standard. So if you wanted to do things like you might have done in the old days, things like this, 
um, you know, methods, you might do that in R, but you won't need to. And we'll come to why you won't need to. I just wanted to mention that. All right. One other thing I want to mention is the file formats. Uh, what was the file format of reporting services? Sorry? XML, yeah, but what was the actual RDLs. RDLs? Okay, so RDL was an XML, you're right. Um, and SQL Server Reporting Services used that. It was all human readable. In the RDL file, there was no data, okay? Uh, Power BI uses something called a PBIX file. And that is like one of those office files, like a docx, you know, or an xlsx. And those things, um, uh, uh, they have everything, all the report structure in the model, plus it has the data inside it. Now, you don't really need to know about this. I just thought I'd mention some of this stuff, just so you know that that's kind of what's... Because I found it surprising. That, that's like the old RDL file that you saw. And the new file, if you were to open up the new PBIX file in, um, you know, it's, it's just a zip file, you'll look in there because I, the first time I looked at it, I go, huh, why is that, you know, so big? It's, I thought it was an RDL file type thing, just a new format. And then I realized the data is in there and uh, it's, you know, there's plenty of stuff that's not, it's binary. Okay, can we get the mic up there? Uh, it has the data model and the data. Okay, all right. So, um, I also want to mention the Power BI additions. This will blow you away, but most of this product is free. And um, I've just taken a chunk of what's on their pricing page. Um, but you'll see, in most scenarios, you're going to be pretty happy with what you get for free. I can't believe Microsoft are doing this, and I'm pretty sure their competitors were shocked as well, because it came out of nowhere. and when you keep looking at it, wow, there's a lot of this stuff is for free. And I want to talk about that as, as I do, as I walk through some demos tonight. But um, to, there's a couple of reasons that for my company, uh, SSW, I don't think we could get by in the free version. Um, I want to consume live data sources with full interactivity. Like when I, I want to consume SQL data in our company, not just stuff I've published up there. So I'd need it for that. I also want to, um, so there's the on-premise data. I want to um, I want to share reports in an organized manner. I don't want people developing reports and then sharing them that way. I want to create a report pack and when they log on, they see all the reports that the company has. So I'll have to pay for that and, um, you know, share data queries as well. So there's a couple of reasons in here that I would need to. Now, one of the things that you'll probably find is I don't understand what you're talking about with what is one gig per user? Like, we've never had to think through that problem. We don't know, I don't know how much data you use, but I'd like you to be free, I'd like you to be under one gig. When I presented this in New Zealand, that was one of the first questions that the guy asked me, and I'll tell you what he asked me in a sec. But I just want you to be aware of this particular problem. Now, how do you know? How do you think you know? How do you know if you use your quota? So you go into Power BI, you log on, powerbi.com, you've got some reports. How would you expect to know? What I'd like is like, you know, yeah, some, something like, in the, um, in the Tesla, you have a, like a little battery icon and you can see how much battery is less. So that would be nice. And so they've given you something a little bit like that. If you click up here on the little cog, you'll see how much of your data you're using. Okay, cool. So, um, here um, is, if you drill into that, sorry, if you click on this guy, manage personal data, you will see how many um, data sources you've used and how close you're coming to the one gig. All right, so you'll get a bit of a feel. All right. Um, now, I think this is really interesting because uh, there's, Microsoft have some serious competition out there. And the competition, I don't know if you've heard of a company called Tableau. They're a really cool company, done some really cool reports. But uh, I think they've got a bit of a fright because they've just uh, announced that they have a free version. And the free version is a one million row limit, which sounds pretty good, but your data must be stored public. <laughs> uh, that's not really going to work in many scenarios. 
if your data, if you let everybody look at your data, you can have a free version. Um, maybe they just wanted to tick a box that they had a free version. There is also IBM Watson, and IBM Watson, um, they have a cool product too. Well, not as cool as Power BI, but they are also giving a half a gig storage limit for free, but only if it's from Excel. So. I don't know what these companies are doing, but they obviously got a bit of a fright, and so they have to give a free offering now. All right, I don't like either of those, um, when I think about, not that we don't use those products, but, or we don't, some of our clients do, um, but I wouldn't, be hap I wouldn't be impressed with either of those free versions, because they don't really work. In anyway, let's talk about Mary the receptionist, you know, the, the knowledge worker. Um, I just want to show you what you can do in the browser because um, I, uh, I think it's really impressive just the first things you can do in the browser. Who's already had a look at Power BI? Okay, only a couple. All right. So let's talk about this thing. And what I really like is the guy that's running this joint, his name's um, James Phillips. And James Phillips said something on a call with me, which I thought was interesting. He said, I wanted it to be a five minutes to wow. That was kind of one of my goals. Could I get, when you log on, and you don't know anything about this product, five minutes to wow, which I thought was cool because I had already had that experience. And I didn't realize it was a goal of his. I just thought oh, it, was, it was a pretty good initial experience. Anyway, so let's go through what Mary the receptionist might want to do and see if you like it. So this is what I want to do. I want to see what I can do in the browser. I want to get some data from something I already know. I'm just going to use SSW's um, Google Analytics, something that is just a data source. Um, I'll wait two minutes for it to load. I'll review the dashboard, and then we're going to do some customizing and see what you think. Then at that point, I want, might want to share the report with some other people in my company or with some friends or whatever. So we'll go through sharing, and I just want to show you this little thing that, it, that you can do called data, data alerts. Like, I know, I want to be alerted if my traffic goes above 10,000 views a day or it goes below 1,000. It might mean my server's off or something, who knows. But you might want some alerts like that. All right, so if you um, um, remember what you look at when you look at Google Analytics, it looks something like this, okay? You get some of it. Now this has been completely optimized and it works well and these are our stats and where our traffic, our traffic comes from the US and um, from Australia and Looks like it comes from Russia, which is weird. Anyway, um, and that's all that stuff. So our Chrome usage is higher than anything else, etc. Now let's let's pretend that doesn't exist. It's just a data source. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to um, create a brand new dashboard. So let's come in and create a new dashboard. All right, how do you think you create a new dashboard? Where do you go to create new dashboard? Plus, you look at plus. Where's plus? Next to where? Dashboards? Ah, there. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, my, mou my mouse isn't working. Oh, great. Yeah, all right. So, that is uh, very uncool because you're not, oh, I can't see my mouse. That is not cool at all. So, I have to put my mouse out here. Yes, I just worked that out. So, I'm using duplicate mode. I think, oh, that thing? Oh, thank you, Raj. All right. That is cool. Thank you. All right. This, this is my first time. I've been presenting for close to 20 years. I've never used this, um, no, this uh, dual mode. What is, it? what is this new thing in PowerPoint that's been there for years, which I've never used? <laughs> presenter view? Yeah, I'm using presenter view. So um, I feel like a novice tonight, but I have a mouse again. Cool. So, congratulations to the Power BI team. They have a banana, which you obviously didn't get. The banana is get data. That's the first thing you've got to do. You could manually go and create a dashboard if you want, but if you're starting from fresh, where's your data? So you click on get data down here. So we'll click on that guy. And uh, now that my laser pointer is on, I can't click next. Great. This is no. Maybe I can use this. Yes, all right, now I've got a combination going here. All right, <laughs> All right. cool. So we get data, and uh, when you click on that, this will pop open. 
And what do we need to do now? What do you think Mary would do? She needs to find, well, it won't be in my organization. I just want to collect some new data. It's not a database and file. It must be in services. This is a fail, in my opinion. They should make this the one banana because this is the most common thing most end users will do, I think. They'll go to services, all right? You don't have four bananas on a screen, okay? That's my opinion anyway. So we'll just click on this get and we'll go in. And when you click on get, uh, up will pop this guy. And what do we do now? I'm looking to, I could be um, analyzing my, um, my MailChimp data, which would be common for Mary, or she might want to do her Google Analytics or lots of stuff. In our company, we have been analyzing our VSO traffic, uh, sorry, our VSO stats, you know, number of check-ins and lots of um, cool stuff and our GitHub stuff. So they're the popular ones there, but there's lots more and there's hundreds of this stuff. So now you would click on the one banana, right? Connect. And then you'd go in and you'd have to fill in this. Now, if you remember what you do in Google, um, when you go into Google Analytics, you have to enter an account, then you have to enter a property and then you have to enter a view. So I just enter those three names as well. So you have to know those details. And when you click on that, you will then click on next, right? And when you enter that, it will pop up with the auth modes of that service. Now, almost everyone is do doing OAuth 2 these days. And um, uh, that's what Google Analytics supports. So then you click and sign in. And when you click sign in, this will say, hey, do you, you know, um, this is the permissions I'd like. Mary would go, I don't know what this means. How do I, where's the, I want to continue my job. They click accept. So they'd go on. And then they go and have a coffee and wait two minutes. And after two minutes, they will then get their dashboard. When they get their dashboard, Power BI makes a be first best guess what, what I can do. And so they just generate this dashboard. Not only do they generate these dashboard, they generate a whole series of reports and a whole series of data sets. So this dashboard is based on the reports and the data sets. Now, what do you think the, these dashboards are, well, what do you call these things? Like, do you call them web parts or widgets or I think they'll probably call them tiles, okay? Um, these tiles, what do you think these tiles are made out of? Huh? What do you think they are? Do you think they're HTML or? Yeah, HTML5, no, they're images, okay? The dashboards are images. And if you, if you look at most uh, things like t Visual Studio Online and lots of these things, the dashboards are often images. Like if you look at your burn down, it's a little image. You click on that and then it opens up with interactive HTML. And, and so that's the same thing here. You look on this. If I want to analyze what the hell, over half my usage on our site is Chrome. I would then click on this guy. Okay? I click on this guy and then I would go forward and it it drills through into the report. If I looked over on the left now, which, I, which I've collapsed here, you would see that uh, that is the report. Sorry, that, that's a report now. Um, and you can see there's a button there, the edit report. I could edit the report. And um, what the cool stuff is, is if I wanted to analyze this, and I'll tell you something that I think is slightly uncool, tiny uncool thing. I think that this, if, you, if I go back, I'll just go back. See how Chrome is listed there? When you come through on here, you've got a, a legend over here. I, I wish the, the biggest one of all had its name written on it because you'd instantly know, oh, Chrome, that's browser stuff. If you saw this one, which uh, if that big one said Android, I'd instantly know, oh, that's the browsers and things like that. Anyway, um, so, so you'd click on this guy. And when you click on this guy, let's just say we clicked on Android. This is fully interactive, like these numbers down there would change. So when you click on parts, other parts uh, filter. So that's kind of filtering. Um, oh, visualizations. I've just been corrected by one of the live streamers. Uh, is that what we call them? The people online. Uh, Tile is not the correct term. It's a visualizer. I still think the tile is a better name, but anyway. Um, how about just call them images? That's what they are. Um, anyway, you come down here and um, you've got a lot of filtering. Now, one of the things I, was, um, I would like to do 
is I would like to maybe right click on this and then it drills through to another report. That's what I'd like because I'm kind of thinking, if you think about reporting services, you have a list of say, I don't know, let's just say billable dollars per employee and you look down the employees. If one employee is at the top and you go, oh, that's weird. wonder how that's so high. You then click on the little plus and it opens, expands. That's called drill down. Okay, and then you could click on the actual the record underneath and that's drilled through. One of the things that um, this hasn't got is hierarchy support. Okay, and we'll come to that in a sec. Now, uh, share, share the dashboard. Marwan. Does this have any difference depending on the data source behind it? Uh, well, potentially yes because it depends how the data setup is done. But you can modify all that. You've got complete control over how that is all set up. Okay, and we'll come to that. So, the next thing that Mary might want to do is share the dashboard. Okay, so, how would you share the dashboard? Where do you think you share the dashboard? Yuli, I'll give you a question. Can you see where you'd share the dashboard? Oh, there you go, share. Yes. So you click on the dashboard and then you click share. Now I've done this about 20 times and I never noticed this link up here. <laughs> I've only just noticed that that's been there and I've always gone dashboard share. Anyway, so you click on dashboard and you click on share, which is just there and then you would share it. So Mary would go through and she would share that. One of the things I really don't like and I think this might be me because maybe I'm the only one that reads URLs, but see how it has me in the URL up there? When I saw that URL with the word me, I thought that must be specific just to me with some good there or something and that would never work for someone else. But if you're in my organisation, my Office 365 organisation or whatever, and I give you that link, that link will just work. I could just copy and paste that link and it works. Obviously, if you're not and you don't have permissions, you wouldn't have permissions. But I just definitely don't like that URL having the word me in it. I think it should have the, you know, the data, you, you know, the, the company that you're on. Like, you know, our like Office 365 is SSW. Well, why wouldn't I say SSW? It would look more natural to me anyway. Um, so you come in here, you would put your names, um, uh, the guys. One of the things that you might notice, uh, you put those names there. Down here, if you look at this guy down here, it actually says, do you allow the recipients to go and share this report? So if I send it to Yuli, or who have I sent it to? Marlon and Yuli, that would uh, allow them to share it on if I allow that. That would be useful in email, wouldn't it? If we had have had that in SMTB from the beginning. I send you this email, don't forward it on to other people. <laughs> so, but anyway, so they've kind of uh, got that nicely done. And uh, the other thing I might mention to you, yes, uh, just over here. So it says they can see the same data. Can they see the whole data source behind the report? They can see the um, they can see the data set. Uh, sorry, they can see the dashboard, the report, and the data set. Okay. Uh, Julian is asking, can you get data from AWS Azure? Uh, the question from one of the uh, online guys is, can you get data from AWS? Yes, you can, and tell him to hold on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you'll see there's a lot of data sources I'm about to show you. I'm just showing you what Mary, the receptionist, would see. I just want to show you the, the wow factor. So you come in here, you do that. Now what she can also do is she can see this on her iPhone or iPad or very shortly Android. Okay. And on that device, you have these other things you can do, such as you can see all the reports, which is pretty cool. You can also um, see these alerts. So you, I could say, Hey, tell me if my, um, my, uh, what my Chrome usage goes under, or it, tell me when it hits 80% because I'm not going to test any other browsers from that point. I don't know. But yeah, you can do lots of cool things like that. So what did she get? Let's have a look what she got. Well, you can open a report from the images or the visualizations, visualizers, whatever they're called. You can kind of do, you can do filtering like I showed you on the report. The drill down and expanding is not there because the hierarchy is missing. Hierarchy is missing. Now, I want to um, I want to I want to tell you something. 
Now, I did these slides uh, about a, uh, a week or so ago. If you read their latest blog post, they've added hierarchy support. Okay? So the, the pace, the cadence of it is too fast for me and I can't keep up. But what they've gone ahead and done is um, uh, back on one of those slides, they've added a little arrow. So when you click the arrow, you can say whether you want it to drill down or not. So, or uh, drill, drill down. Or it doesn't do the expanding like uh, reporting services, but it will just switch the report to be drilled down. Um, all right, just wanted you to know. Uh, the alternative way is to use SQL reporting services to do those type of things and embed them, which you can't do, but you will be able to do soon. When SQL 2016 sh ships, I will expect that all that, because they're kind of mentioned there's going to be lots of cool stuff coming with reporting services and Power BI, so I would expect that I'll have integration going. And it's pretty important to their strategy. Anyway, um, so drill through isn't working because you might want to drill through to another report, okay? Um, I believe that's uh, close on their cadence, so we'll get that. But what I might want to do is on one of those records, let's just say the employee names, I might want to make a link that goes off to um, Yuli's CRM record, something like that, in a completely different system. Now what they've done, if you read their very last blog post, is they've given you the ability to add HTML and put a link in that way, but I would like it on the data items. Okay, and I showed you how you can do sharing and data alerts. Now, the things that um, I would prefer is, you know, you can't always copy and paste the URL to share. It would be nice if you could and then you gave it to someone else and when they got it and they didn't have permissions, it just, you click a link and it says request permission. Something like that because, you know, otherwise you have to get, go through that sharing system. Um, you can't add an image. So, you know, on that dashboard and we said we had all those visualizers. I wanted to add one which was just a, a logo of SSW on the report. If I want to do that, I can't do it. All right? Now, I need another application to do that, and I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, I can't even make basic changes to the data or the model in that mode at that point. All right? So, I will talk to you about how you can do that. Um, and drill through, well, it's one of the most popular suggested things, and uh, you can see a link there. Now, I do want to tell you that a couple of things, that, uh, some tips for Mary. So a couple of things she should do is always keep the, the names short because the names end up in the left-hand nav and that navigation on the left, you need to keep them short and you should also keep them consistent. When you rename one, you need to rename the others. Um, you need to hide the, the workspace and the filters, the left and the right, hide them so you get more space. Uh, or you can ask your boss to buy your 4K display. That might be an easier option. All right. So I'm interested to know, what do you think of this initial experience? Do you think Mary, uh, a knowledge worker, will be super happy? Who's really impressed by that first experience? Who's so-so? Okay, all right, cool. So 50-50 uh, uh, on uh, impressions. We will um, talk about whether you like this next one. And I'd like to know, um, whether this power user guy, you know, the power user that kind of helps the knowledge workers in an office get going. The flow that James Phillips wants is he wants people just to get the data, get the model, do the business logic and the calcs and add the extra fields and then do the reporting. He just wants a three-step process. So I'm going to take you through this. Uh, what I didn't notice as I was doing this, you know, I'm trying to add an image of like a logo for SSW and I'm, how do I do this? This is pretty limited. Now, obviously, it will get better over time, but right now, all that stuff is in the Power BI desktop, a client. And it wasn't that obvious to me that it was there. So I'm going to walk you through that. This is a standalone desktop app and I'm thinking, huh? Why would you do this? Why wouldn't you put everything in the browser? I, don't, I think this is weird. Well, it works without powerbi.com. So get a load of this. I can drag all the data down to my machine. And let's just say, um, I just want to analyze all the data in my company or whatever. I can just use this desktop app like I would use Excel and do lots of cool modeling. And um, it's just, I don't need to publish anything up to the web. It's just a cool client. Um, I can get lots of data. 
um, data source options, I can combine different data sources from left, right and centre. Things like um, SQL, Oracle, IBM, Sci um, Sybase, Teradata, and there's heaps of these things. Plus, you can grab it from a whole lot of stuff like Excel, CSVs, lots of files. All right? You happy with that? Anything else you'd like? SharePoint. You want to query SharePoint? Salesforce. Salesforce. All right. Yes. We've got all that too. So you've got SharePoint, Salesforce, Dynamic CRM. You've got every single type that you would want. And there's more and more keep popping into this list. So basically, there's more and more of these web services. It's all, you know, if it supports REST, they're supporting it. And then you might want to publish to Power BI. Yuli? I'm going to tell you what's, what's not free and what is free, but, but the desktop stuff that you're seeing, this is all free. And I'm going to call out when it's not. So it's quite impressive. Okay. So um, advanced queries, this guy can do. Um, you can do relationships and add custom images. Thank God you can do custom images. All right. One of the things I found really weird was you, it's not click once deployment. I would love, I thought that was really odd. Even Chrome supports click once deployment, and I'm thinking, this is just an XCI install. Am I going to have to keep updating this? Well, when an update came after the three week cadence or whatever, it just um, said, oh, can I update? So they've built their own click once. I'd love to know why they didn't use click once themselves, but it does the same thing anyway. All right. So, um, why? Or what is it? So, Look, I don't know exactly what they're thinking, but they seem to be completely replacing this data tab. You know this data tab in Excel? It feels like they're putting everything that's there into this guy. So um, if you think about it, this, ha this had power view and power, what were they, power map, power pivot. Um, what's, the, the, what's the table? Yeah, all that stuff that's in there is now in here. So this feels like the direction they're taking. And I, there won't, it won't be too far away that you actually won't need to do this for anything because all that stuff will be in here and even better with a more support for R and other things like that. So um, what, do you, what do you think they call this app? This app itself, what do they call it? Yes, but so if you actually open this Power BI desktop, Where is it? Oh goodness. I think it's, uh, I've got a, I, no, I'm not stopping anything. Thank you. I am just going to move this over there and try to bumble my way through this. But uh, with file, yeah, obviously, all right. Oh, yeah, you just click that five times and it will work. And then you click on about. I just think it's kind of, uh, it's a companion product. So it's like they can call it a companion app. All right. And this is, this is the guy. And this is going to be impossible to demo in that manner. All right. But anyway, that is that. Is that. And I thought that was quite, quite cool. All right. All right. So what I want you to do is I want, I want to show you how you use this thing. I'm going to go and get the data, connect to SQL Server, then go and select the tables and views. Um, I consider that Power Query in my head because that's what Power Query was um, before. But what do you think the team call that? Do you think they call that when you select all the tables and views? They, they call it what? Get a model? No, they consider it get data. You know that button, the big yellow button, the banana? That is get data. Okay. Um, so then you go ahead and you might want to create some custom columns. Okay. For, um, for example, you might want to concatenate first name and last name. You might want to do some other manipulation. That's a common thing. So this is just the power user. And then you might want to add some relationships between things. And then he might want to add some visualizations. Like, um, I think that person that told me that they were called visualizers might be wrong, but I'd love to know if he's completely right. Because those, those things on the screen, they're called visualizers. Okay. Anyway, we'll see. So I want to add a few things. I'm going to go and get some SQL data, and I'm going to do this on SSW data, okay? Um, get chart, slicer, funnel, card, image. We'll see how this works. 
All right, I also want you to know that after all that's done and I've got all my stuff right and I'm, look, I'm looking at my stuff and I think those reports look cool, what am I going to do? I'm going to publish it, then share it. Okay, so then I need to publish it up to Power BI, create a dashboard, schedule a refresh, create a content pack so everybody in the company can share it and create potentially other contact packs. You probably won't do any of this, but I want to show it to you. And then I'll want to tell you about some other tips and tricks. Now, what do you think those stars mean? Pay. Pay. They mean money. You don't get those few without paying. All right, everything else is free. So, it's a pro feature. Let's kick this off. You start. Now, what do you think? How do I start? What do I start with? I want to create a dashboard. Where do I create a dashboard? Yeah, where's the get data down here? They didn't put a get data. Oh, they put it in a different spot. Okay, so it's up there. Get data. And then we come through here. You check database and then SQL Server. And then you press connect down here. And then you'd come through. You'd choose your SQL database and your... Uh, this is based on... Uh, just switch... Uh, what I've based this on... Where is my Chrome? It's gone. So, I'm just... Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Great. That's fantastic. Anyway, this is based on sswtimepro.com. Okay, it's just our time sharing system. We are just a tenant of that um, online service like everybody else, and we're doing this based on that database. So, um, in, in that application, it just uh, you just put timesheets in and you put who, who you're working for. And so I'm just doing... It's not a very complicated model. So, um, we'll put the server in the database and then we're going to click on OK and um, this will pop up. I'll use integrated authentication in this case and um, then this will pop open, okay? Something I consider power, power view, okay? They call this get data. I want to take all this data, I'll take all that and then I'm going to press next so there's nothing actually to do. Now, in this case, I've just connected to one SQL Server database. But obviously, I could go through this process and collect lots of data. And, and in fact, they kind of encourage you to do, to connect to more than one simple database. If you think about Uber, Uber is pretty cool, right? And Uber has, has a, a cool feature called, um, well, I don't know if it's cool. What do you call it? Um, the surge pricing. You know surge pricing? The way that um, Uber do their surge pricing is they collect lots of data that's not theirs. They can collect event data and, you know, all lots of data from cities and then they work out from that data when they can do surge pricing or when they should based on, uh, um, you know, concerts and other things like that, all right? So they're, they're kind of encouraging companies shouldn't report on just their own data. They should be trying to get other people's data or aggregate data, stuff that might help them work out things. I'm going to click on this. And I just want you to be aware that I should connect to plenty of others, okay? Anything supported by Power Query, I could do. Now, in our company, um, you know, we have a number of Greeks working for us and they've got like long names like Maverick, Georges, Opopolopoulos and they will screw up your reports if they're really long. So what you want is Swanapol, okay? So you need to keep it a bit um, shorter and you need to take off the first name so that the graphs don't go funny. So we have, uh, if I wanted to do this, how would I go ahead and do it? Well, you'd then go and uh, come up here, click on this new column, and then click, uh, type an expression. If you have a look at that expression, it just says employee equals, uh, so it's just like an Excel formula. Uh, what do we call it, Excel expression? Yeah, formula, whatever. So, um, so all I've done is do that, not very, not very difficult. All right, so when you do that, you'll end up with this new column over here. Well, I don't know. It's, it's called DAX, but it's just a, a normal Excel expression. It's basically the same. Now, I'm going to show you how this gets a little bit more powerful. I'm just doing the most simple one at the moment. But you, you come here, you've got an extra column now. Okay? So it doesn't, it doesn't seem too complicated. All right. So the next thing that I had to do in this case is validate relationships. And I'll tell you why, because the data wasn't looking like I was expecting. So if you have a look through here, I don't know, I don't know how to um, explain this easily to you. 
But if you look at this, there's a problem. I don't know if you can tell, but we have clients, employees, timesheets. Timesheets also are related to clients. Now, I, I looked at this and thought, what is this? I thought it was an entity diagram. Now, maybe that's not the best name for it because that's what I thought it was. Now, I couldn't see what is actually wrong with this thing. Now, it, maybe a better name for this might be um, relationships for drill down. No, I'm not really sure. But navigational. Yeah, navigational relationships or something. Na relationships for navigation might be quite good. But if you look closely, I don't know if you can tell what's wrong because you have to work this out. I want, when I look at, it, look at employees, to see, or when I look at employees, I want to see the amount of time they've generated. Okay, I don't want the timesheets to potentially be back to the client. You could, you might want it that way, I want it the other way. So if I look closely at this, if, if you click here, I had to make that relationship between the client and the employee not active. I had to tick that off and then press OK. And then I had to go to the other one, this guy, emp time to emp, and then make this one active. All right, got it? I know it's slightly confusing. But we'll do that. All right, so we're in business. Now, there's one other thing. What do you do if you don't have an entry for every single day? Now, we have had a rule on this for a long time um, because we've had cubes in our company forever and when we create cubes, you need to have a table in there um, that has a record for every single day because otherwise, you know, people don't enter a timesheet for every single day and then some of the reports would look a bit wonky. Alrighty, so this bit is uh, a little bit complicated. I want you to get a handle on this. Can everyone just stand up for a sec, just so you don't fall asleep as we do this? Just a quick stretch to the left, a quick stretch to the right. Come on, just, all right. Come on, Vaughan, you don't move. All right, okay, all right, take a seat. Now, what's involved in this? So. You click on manage relationships here and um, you click on this guy up here and then you'll come down here and you click new and then you'll have this relationship pop up and then in this case if you follow the instructions on what on our um, URL I just gave you you'll have this table there with a, a record we call it dim date for the dimension of date and it has it puts a record for every single day now I've talked to the team about this asking them to make this work out of the box without doing what I just told you. I'm not exactly sure what their plans are, but I have the feeling that they, they said they'll nail this, okay? And they kind of described, um, you know, they're already thinking of it. And now I, don't, I expect in future generations something like, I don't know what they'll do, but maybe a, a date tab and it will have this functionality. All right, so if, sorry? Yeah, this problem has been solved a million times on the web. Uh, I just showed you one, the way we solve it, um, and the team is going to solve it. All right? But for the time being, just be aware you need to do what I just told you. So you come through here and you put dim date, emp, emp time, because uh, I want to relate it to those, and uh, then you just press OK and, you, and you're done. So now I've gone through, I've got my data, I've gone through and I've... Um, uh, fixed up the, you know, I fi I've added some, you know, business logic, not very much, but I've added some business logic, um, fixed up the model a little bit and fixed up my date and there's pretty much nothing else to do. What do I do now? I've got all my data model right. I generate my report. Okay, so to generate the report you need to add some visualizations to the thing. So I'm going to go through now and add six visualizations of the TimePro data. I'm going to add a slicer, a bar chart, a pie chart, a chart, a card, and a funnel. Okay, and finally an SSW image. All right. So I go through and I click on all those guys. I click on all these visualizations here, and I end up with this. Click, 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 and I'm done. This guy is called a funnel. This thing is called a pie chart. This thing down here is called a card. It's a weird name, isn't it? Card, and sorry, I blanked it out. Um, yeah, I fuzzed it out. This thing down here, this is called a bar chart. And these things here, what do you call these things? Huh? 
Filters. Yeah, I'd call them filters too, but they're actually called slices. Okay, so if you want to be cool, you've got to know the lingo. Yeah. In BI, it's called slices. In BI, yeah, it's called slices, yes. Okay, so I've put three slices there, one for the calendar year, one for the, um, uh, the <coughs> fiscal year, and one for the employee. All right, great. So we're done. Are you all happy with that? I even put the logo there. All happy with that? Pretty good? Well, I can tell you that I'm not happy because I have a rule on our Rules to Better Reporting Services page, um, which is we always show comparison data going back at least two years, or usually I show it for the prior six periods. And we've, we've got all these, we've sorted all this out for reporting services, where every time we show data, like if you show data for the sales for the month, it's not very useful unless you see the prior six months to see what's going on. So when I look at this straight away, I'm not happy because, well, is this year better than last year or not? So I need to show the prior year with this. Otherwise, to me, it's not that useful. How do you think you go ahead and do that? Because we've, I've done this with cubes before and it is not particularly easy. All right. So let me just go through this. We have, yeah, you can look at reporting services to see how we solve this with um, RDLs. I'm going to talk you through how you do it with this. And uh, do you think it's going to be easier or harder? Because I had not a clue. Okay, not everything's easier, but we'll see. We're going to go through and add a new column, and we're going to put an expression there. And if you have a look at this expression, it says sum of cell total equals calculate the sum of the cell total, same period last year, dim date date. Same period last year? I'd never heard of this thing. This is a DAX expression. Now, uh, many of you will just say, oh, well, I just find the expression. That's pretty cool. But if you think about how you had to do this in MDX, that's how you had to do that same thing in MDX. That was a right pain, a serious... In fact, I, you know, we have like 40, 45 developers at SSW, and there's only a few that are any good at MDX. So it's not even easy to find them. They're, they're almost as hard to find as, as, as a uh, regex guy. They're just, it's very painful. So, it, also it does also depend on the cube, but assuming you have a good cube and you've invested in your cube, you want your power users who help out the knowledge workers to be able to look at the DAX expressions to see how far they can get. Sorry? Yes, you could. Yes, you could. And you can go even further with M as well. Now hold on. So, I just want you to, um, when I saw this, I said, wow, DAX can do everything. Oh, do I still need to know MDX? What do you think? Well, the answer is no, you don't need to know MDX anymore unless you're pulling data. Like the, the, the person using it is only going to do DAX. That's the only thing that's really there, DAX or M. But I just wanted to, like you might think there's no MDX in the product at all. There is if you need to pull data from a cube. So I just want you to be aware that those Power Query actions, and I shouldn't call it Power Query, I should call it the Get Data Actions or whatever they're called. They, when they pull it out of a cube, if you happen to have a cube in your organization, that, that uses MDX under the covers, okay? And you can use your own custom MDX as well if you want to use custom MDX. You just need to go into Options, Security, and tick this native database queries requires user approval for na native database queries. Okay, so that's kind of what that is. All right, so just be aware of that. Now, I want you, I, I call this out for a reason. And the reason that I call this out is Microsoft really want you to use tabular. In fact, I'm happy to use tabular all the way, but you, they are prob you're probably going to find that cubes continue to be used all the time because of something that Microsoft haven't done and they haven't put tabular in the standard enterprise, in the standard SQL Server license. If you want tabular, you need to have the enterprise license, which is absolutely crazy. Now I need to, we need to talk to Vaughan after this. But gee, if they want us to use tabular and we all want to use tabular, put it in standard edition. But that's that's the thing just to be aware of. You can't just go into every single company and just start saying, all right, do everything tabular unless you're 
cognizant of the license they have or they're willing. Oh, I guess there's a good reason to talk them into enterprise. Uh, that's not going to work everywhere. All right. So let's, um, let's continue what I was talking about. Sorry, I got a little bit off track, track there. Um, I want to go through and add that. I've added that thing. Now, if you add that extra field, remember last year, you will see down here we have sell total last year. When you click on that, it, you will put it in the values up here and you'll see that it adds onto the legend over here and you'll see that you get an extra, extra uh, column in the bar charts to compare with last year. So you can see this year is better than last year and you'll get a second one of these. What are these things called? Cards. Very good. You're, you guys are listening. All right. So I've pretty much showed you a whole chunk of what this thing does. And there's a little bit more that you can do um, after you've got this model perfect and you're really happy and you've got someone to check it, you might want to put it up live. So you want to publish it. So let's walk through this. We've gone ahead and done all these things I said we would do. Now I want to publish to Power BI and create a dashboard. And because you know when we did it the other way, remember we did the get data and we chose Google Analytics and it just magically created a dashboard and reports and stuff. We've gone the other way. We've gone back end first. So we've gone to the back end, done the model. Now we've created a report. What have we not created? The dashboard on top. So that part isn't done. So we need to create that dashboard. Then we want to maybe schedule an on-prem refresh and do some other things. So let's go through that. So, how do you create a dashboard? Or how do, so, sorry, we need to publish first. My mistake. So we're going to go File, Publish, and then when we pr publish, we're going to uh, choose Publish to Power BI. I think this is weird. You see Publish to Pyramid Server. Now, I don't know. Now, Pyramid is not a Microsoft company. But Pyramid and Microsoft did a deal. Now, I don't know the time frame here. I'd love to know the time frame. But they did a deal where um, they provided nice integration. Now I think what they were probably thinking, and I, uh, I'd love to know the, the backstory here, but I'm going to guess the Power BI team thought, well, we're going to create the world's best online service. What are we going to do with all the people that whinge and say we want on-premise? Well, we're not going to do that. Uh, there, there's this pyramid company out there. We'll just do some integration there and put it in there. But that was probably, I'm going to guess, before they bought DataZen. And now DataZen is an on-premise server. I wouldn't be surprised to see them kill that and put DataZen there. That would make more sense to me. But uh, who knows? We'll see what happens. I guess they can't. They've already formed a nice relationship with them. Anyway, they'll probably leave it. All right. So you come in here. You press Publish to Power BI. You click on this um, button, Sign In. And you sign in. This will pop up. You'll sign in. And then it will know uh, where to publish. You will then go and have a cup of coffee. Two minutes. And after two minutes, You'll be in business, you'll see this pop up and there'll be a link to click. You'll click this link and bingo, this will open. And now it's, uh, your report is done. See how I've, on the left hand side, we're on the report. What are we missing? We are missing a dashboard. So we're going to, um, we're going to be happy to share this report. But if we want to start, uh, you know, you'll usually create a few reports and then you'll make a nice dashboard on top. How do you think you go and create a dashboard? You only got a clue how you create a dashboard? Dashboard plus. Dashboard plus. All right, very good. All right. So you come on and you click this dashboard. So I'll just, um, let's go through and do that. You come through and you'll click this plus and then you'll enter that. And um, you'll press save. Now, when you press this plus and enter that, you'll have this dashboard. What do you do from here? What I, I'll tell you why I'm mentioning this because I found it a bit um, confusing. I expected to create a dashboard and then go into the dashboard and then right click and go add web part or add widget or yeah, add visualization. That's what I expected. But you can't do it that way. You have to then go to the report and then pin it back. So the way it works is you select the dashboard first up here, then you go down and you select the report and it kind of remembers the last one you're on. I find that a bit weird. And then you come on here and see these little, these little pins. You select that pin or that pin if I want the logo. And then the last visualization or whatever, the last thing is applied to the last selected dashboard. So that is how that works. 
Um, and then you're in business, you will have uh, your dashboard all set up for however you like it. All right, so that's that. All right, so at this point in time, the, the next thing to do is you say, well, that's pretty cool. I need that to refresh. How often do I need it to refresh? Once an hour, once a day? You know, that will depend on how you like it. This one is a pro feature, okay, setting up this. And the way you set up this refresh is you need to go ahead and download the Power BI gateway. You need to schedule a refresh and go into the settings and I'll show you how you do that. So you, up in the top right, you'll click on this guy. By the way, I should mention, when I first started using this, I did not look at this thing. I, and that's why I didn't know about Power BI Desktop. It took me by surprise. So you come in here and in this case, you download the Power BI Personal Gateway. You click on that guy, you click launch, and you'll then need to make a decision. You'll need to make a decision, am I going to make this thing a Windows XE on a command line or however you want to do it, or do you want to make it um, a service? Obviously choosing a service so it just runs in the background is better, but you need to have admin rights. Okay, so you make that call. How do you want it, service or an app? All right, anyway, when you do that, you come in here, and down here on the data set, you choose this uh, option called Schedule Refresh. You click on Schedule Refresh, and up will pop this thing. You go um, into, the, into the data set, and you click on, uh, down here, see the Schedule Refresh? You will enter how often you want this scheduled. All right, so that's all scheduled. All right, whew, keeping up? Yes, Yuli. Yuli, I thought you were the mic guy and you can't remember to use a mic. No one handed it to me. Um, <laughs> so we're normally, we're using reporting services for this sort of stuff now and whenever I run the report, it's on live data. So this looks like a step down. Um, so now I'm looking at yesterday's data because that was when well, it was last refreshed. you're looking at yesterday's data, you're looking at when it was last refreshed. <laughs> Reports in the back in the old days. Uh, could you say that again? I think they do have an, um, a way that you can push data live into it by API, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. You can code it. You can code it for these things. But even when you code it, you don't have complete control over when it refreshes. You don't have complete control at this point in time. No. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is so can I force a refresh? No, you can't, you can't force a refresh. There's no button to force a refresh. You have to go with the scheduled. Um, update, but it is a really important point. So are there now three copies of the data, one on the original SQL Server, one on the desktop or laptop where the Power BI report thing, desktop thing was run, and another copy up in the, the cloud? Um, I guess that's a good point, yes, there is going to be three copies in that scenario. So um, for me, a, a normal user uh, scenario would be I'd open up the, the, des the dashboard the, the and I'd look at it and I'd see something weird. I go, that's not right, and then I go back and I'd fix the data, and then I'd want to refresh the report to see that I got it right. I can't do that. No, you can't do that. Yep. <laughs> um, the data that we're actually publishing, is that the actual aggregates, or rather than the, the data set itself? Well, it depends, but if it's coming from a cube, yeah, it's taking aggregates. But it's coming from the database. Well, if it's coming from a SQL database, it's taking all the data. So if my data is like 10 gig? Ah, yes. We're going to come to that. Um, in fact, when I was in New Zealand, um, the client there said, ah, so I'm just trying to work out, do I fit in the free version? I have a table. It has an integer. It has a date. It has a dollar. It has this and it has that. It's got seven columns, and these are the data types. Um, we have 20,000 records per day added to that table, and I have 60 sites. Does that fit in under a gig? I'm thinking, thinking how do I work that out? I don't know. But probably one, of the, uh, one way to kind of potentially work this out, and I don't know for sure, is to go through and um, make Grab that data in a PBIX file and look at the size of that. That might be a good indicator because uh, there's no other easy calculations to use at this point in time. Hold it still. So if, if the data is not displayed anywhere in the report, it's still stored? 
So if I have wrongly designed my data model, my PBI X file will become gigantic? Uh, I'm not really sure what your question is. So if I have done my get data and I have selected all the tables yes. and my database is terabytes, whatever, is that yes. all stored in the PBI X file? Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's stored in your PBI X file. Yep. Um, um, but what is the problem with having a large PBI X file unless you're sharing it? Um, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is security. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this, we're potentially going back to access days where people would put things in an access database and send them around. Now, obviously, you have control from the server going down, so you could stop people potentially having access to things like that. But in the old days, people were entering into the access database first, and, you know, IT couldn't get control of it. So now you've got control from the top down whether they've got access to the data. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't think there's, I, I definitely think there's potential issues with PBIX files. Definitely, a anybody ever gets a copy of something on their machine, there's a problem. Just defending a little bit the part of data not being accurate, if your data was linked to a cube, cube are not always up to date. Cube requires time to be processed. So whenever you process them or refresh them, they yes. are up to date. So yes, just to defend cubes it have the same problems, yes, that's right. And uh, I, I thought it was interesting watching the SQL, sorry, the T TFS team who initially did a lot of reports based on cubes and they gave you a, an out of the box warehouse, data warehouse when you, when you installed TFS and they had a lot of complaints as well about, oh, my burn down's not looking current, I just updated it and we had a sprint review meeting, it's not up to date. They felt a lot of pain if you have a look. All their burn downs and all their cool little charts, they're all based on SQL data now. It's yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Hmm. But if anybody's ever wanting to make a change, like Yuli said, and refresh the report and see the latest data, there's problematics. But anyway, these problems will get sorted. All right, I want to move on to the next bit. So that is um, the end of the power user. Well, not really. There's a few other things he could do. And the first thing is he might want to share a whole bunch of reports. Let's just say for TimePro, TimePro is a stag database and there's 50 reports we need everybody in the company to have access. How do I do that? Well, I had to explain this in terms Kiwis could understand. So I just imagine like, imagine a whole series of sheep <laughs> in a, you know, there's, there's this fence, like we'll call this the organisation, okay? And only the sheep in that area is allowed to, um, see those reports. What is that called? Well, that is called a content pack. And those organizational content packs that are packaged up is a pro feature. Now, all right, let's walk through how you do that because it's pretty impressive. Um, uh, essentially, we come in here and then you'll click on get data down here. And then when you click on get data, you'll come into here. Where do we go now? Where? Services is what we normally do. This time we're packaging up a whole series of reports. My organization, correct. So this is the power user sharing off the reports. You click on get. Um, this will open up this guy and he goes, well, there's only one big banana here. It's, it, the banana is too big in my opinion. Anyway, you click on the banana and we come in here and we enter all, this, all the stuff. So you'll, you'll give it a name. Um, you'll... Um, say whether it's a specific or report for a specific group or everybody, we'll give it a title, description, give it a logo so it looks quite nice, choose which ones you want, and then you're gonna click publish. And when you click publish, now you'll need to um, test whether this works. How's you know, this guy gonna test? Well, he's going to log on as a different user and see what it looks like. So he's gonna log on as a different user now, and he's gonna go in and press data and choose this and he's going to see this new guy and he's going to press connect and he's going to say, voila, there's all the reports. Great. What do I do if I want to share it with everyone? Okay, with everybody in the world. Now, the way I think about this is we have a, we have Link Auditor. We, sswlinkauditor.com, you put in a URL, you scan your website, or everybody's web, it only scans public websites. Whatever report that you generate on that data, anybody should be able to see, right? It's no 
no reason it should be private because somebody else could run it on your site. Okay, so I want to share it, share it with all the sheep in the world, all right? They're all, not in paddocks, all right? They finally got this, you know, Kiwis are a bit slow sometimes. Although they're getting a flag faster than us. So can't make fun of the Kiwis all the time. All right, so we want to share this with everybody in the world. How do you do that? It's like an organizational content pack, but for public, right? And we call that the service, okay? A content pack for service. Now, here's the story. It is very early days in this, and if you ask me, the, the Power BI team haven't got this fully baked. Um, at the moment, the tooling is pretty immature, and you've got to go and work with the Power BI team to get listed. I'm talking about if I want um, Link Auditor, to appear in the out-of-the-box experience like it did for you know, GitHub or Google Analytics, I have to go and talk to these guys. So um, the data service must be publicly accessible, fair enough. The authentication must allow um, Power BI to log on, so um, a decent OAuth2 would be a good idea. And it's a bundle of your model, your query, and your dashboards, and you need to email this email address to make it work, okay? So, all right. I want to tell you we've done all this, but I just want to tell you a couple of tips and tricks for that power user. A few things that um, you just need to know. So a couple of other things. I think that the data types in the query editor are going to be a common thing that they get wrong, especially if the first record is not what you, if it misinterprets the first record on a text file or something. If you do, you need to tell it what it, what it is. So let's just talk about that. If that first one here, see this first one is a date, but the first record on the th thing was not a date. It just guessed it incorrectly and thought it was a text or something. You come into, you click on that column, you click up here, and then you come down here and you say that's a date. Fair enough? Not very hard. All right, so that's how that's done. The other thing worth mentioning is the sort. Okay, this is one of my most annoying things. Um, but I hate anything being sorted alphabetical. Like I hate employees being sorted by Adrian is always at the top because his name starts with A. Even though, as Adam, I benefited from being at the top of so many lists in my life, I think it's crazy. I always like to sort on something like most recently joined or largest billable hours or something, you know, something half useful. But anyway, the, the, even if, I've noticed a lot of people don't agree with me on this point, um, but let's just take, for example, one you will agree with me on. And that would be on this. If you saw April, August, December, this is the, my favorite argument I use when people don't agree with me. Because <laughs> like, there's a lot of people who just like alphabetical sorting. Uh, especially Mehmet, the guy that builds most of our reports in our office. <laughs> All right, so um, you come, how do you do that? Well, you come in here, you choose the field. Okay, so this is, you know, you've got a three character month. You come through here, you go sort by column, and then you click calendar month and you're in business, all right? And then afterwards, it will look normal. It will look like January, February, March, April, etc. Okay, so that's just another little tip for power users. Uh, another one would be this geographic fields. Now, I was in New Zealand, and I showed this to one of our good clients over there, and I said, wow, check this out. Modeling, look, you can see this field here. It is a date, it's an address field. You can come in here and tell this guy that it's an address field. Look at this. You click that and then on your reports, you will have things like this. It'll put, and he goes, yeah, who cares? So I was, I was really shocked that he wasn't jumping up and down with excitement. But I don't know. If, uh, when you show this to your clients and they're very happy, can you tell me? Because uh, so far, my experience was underwhelming. But maybe that's Kiwis. Kiwis are often very hard to get you know, excited about anything apart from uh, the Blur Slow Cup. All right. OK, cool. All right. So we're going to um, get up to speed now with DAX. Um, and that is, I'll just tell you very quickly. You just need to know that. So. Um, there is a series of expressions here. I won't go through it because all you really need to know is there's heaps of these methods. And if you click on this link, there's lots of DAX expressions to 
work out. And what if you can't find a DAX expression that you want? Type your own. Type your own. Okay. Learn M. All right. And um, the last thing I might just tell you about is the query editor, which is kind of Power Query, although you shouldn't use that. Um, uh, that has some great functionality, um, you know, and you can use that guy or you can use the Power Query formula M. Okay, so <coughs> that's good. So I have a question for you. Do you think that that is a good story for power, power users? Yep. Who's impressed with this product now? Who is still so-so? Okay, I'd love to, can we get the mic to? Do you, I'd love to know which areas were weakest for you. I'm not, I'm not quite with the old um, data, data thing quite yet, I don't think. It's no. not, you're not so late to me. It's okay. Nice. All right, cool. Can I get the mic down here? Which bits were? Oh, the, I'd have to relook at your video. I'm right. starting to fade. Okay, we're starting to fade. All right. No worries. All right. We'll get some pizza into you soon. All right. Coffee. Okay. Coffee and Coke. Coffee and Right. Okay. You're one of those programs. You slide that <laughs> stuff under. Okay. Great. All right. Well, you've got no hope for the rest. So just have a little snooze, but I'm about to move on to the propeller heads. Now, I want you, this is, this is coding, all right? So I just want you to be aware of how you can take this Power BI product to the next level. Now, in our case, um, I, I just want you to broadly know you can um, export your data to their, you know, your REST data using their web API. You can use Azure Stream Analytics, like if you've got a hell of a lot of data going along, uh, especially from these IoT devices, you will want to just take sampling, and that's another way. Anyway, these are the two ways out of the box. Now, I want to just go through a case study where we've used this. We've used this on a couple of our services. Like if you go into timepro.com, or sorry, sswtimepro.com, um, you can analyze your data. When you analyze your data, we didn't write any of that. We use Power BI. In fact, this is an area that SSW has been asked forever. We always get asked by clients after we've done some reporting, what's the story with ad hoc reporting? And you want to know how many times we've actually kind of, because there's never any instant ad hoc reporting, you can kind of give them the, um, what was the thing with reporting services? There was the report bill, you had the report bill, you had, you teach them Excel, you teach them different things. Sometimes they go, no, I don't want any of that, I want it in the browser, I want it just nice and simple. We built, we've built our own ad hoc reporting many times, that style of thing. But there's some sort of CI in there. Yes, there is. Yep. But in the end, a lot of clients want it to work for them and they want it to be completely browser based. And um, so, it, as an example, for, time, for our link auditor, what we wanted is it, it goes through, analyzes every link on your website, and gives you a list of broken links. It also gives you a series of other lists. So there's essentially a series of reports and we wrote all those reports. Initially, we put them in reporting services and we embedded the RDLC in the page. It was the most requested feature to get rid of that and just put in the browser. So I always thought it was all kind of in the browser, people didn't like it. And so we made all those reports, we redid them as Angular reports, okay? It was quite good. But we still didn't, if you ask us for a specific report that we didn't have, We'd say, oh, well, you know, we don't really want to do that. If they paid us, we could give them a special report, okay? But what we would have loved to have done is put a button there that just says ad hoc query. That would be awesome. And then they can do whatever they like and we don't have to do anything. Well, so what we have is the static reports. You go to this website, you type in your URL, and then you scan it. After you've already scanned heaps and heaps of sites, you would come up here and you press sign in. And when you sign in, you would enter your email address and password, and then you'd click sign in, and then in you'd go, and you'd see all your last scans. And this is an example of, the la of a report, I guess. But what we wanted to do was when you click on one of these things, let's just say this one down here, David Brella's one, um, you click on this guy, you open this up, and what we wanted was a button at that point in time that says analyze, and, and interrogate the data any way you want. So that's what we wanted. We wanted it to just use Power BI. So how did we do that? Well, the first thing we did is we did this um, button up here called Analyze and Power BI. So we gave them that button and now they could do any question they ever ask us about a special report, we just refer them to that. 
We come in here and this is what they would experience. They would experience, they need to log on, okay? They come in here, they log on, and then it would say, hello, can we have permission for all this stuff? You know, Mary, Mary goes, I don't know what all this means, except, all right? So, so we, we just granted Power BI permission to read all the data, okay, or the user did. And then when, when the user gets this, he clicks on these guys and whatever he wants, clicks on those three, throws a, you know, uses a few visualizations and bingo, he's got a few reports, however he wants it. I don't care. He can find any type of data he wants. How does that work? Well, we have our product called Link Auditor. It talks to Azure, Azure Active Directory. Active Directory sends back a token. Link Auditor then sends all its data to Power BI with that token attached, all right? Now, I just wanna take one step backwards. Can we just take a step backwards? Why are we using a web API and why don't we use the built-in connectors? Because at this point, I need to do some more coding to make all this work. I would prefer to use something that had no coding. That would be better. So, could I use my organization? No, because they're not part of my organization. This is everybody in the world. Hmm. It is in a SQL database. Could I use a database? Well, I could theoretically, but I'd have to give them instructions and I'd have to um, give them these, the username and password. I could do that, but there's another problem. That's a pro feature, okay? And now I'd need to say, well, I, I can give you ad hoc reporting, but you have to pay for it. I don't want to, you know, SSW link auditor is free. I don't want any of that stuff. I could use this file. I could, I could generate a, an Excel spreadsheet and do it that way, and there, but there's still going to be manual steps involved in here. So uh, I could use this services, but now I have to email Microsoft that special email address and have a conversation. You know, we're developers, we're not very good at conversation, and uh, do it that way. All right, so I could get it, and maybe we are going to do that in the future. But for the time being, that's not how I did it. So I want to show you how you do this. There's two parts. The first part is to go into Azure, Add your app, generate your key, and uh, delegate permissions. And the second part is to open up Visual Studio, add a new get package, add a method to um, authenticate, add another method to redirect back um, from AD, and with the token, then send it to uh, Power BI via our REST services. So that's kind of everything. Let's walk through doing that. So you come through, you open up a a Azure, you click on the actual, um, Active Directory down here, you click on the organization, you go into the organization, and then um, you need to go into this applications one up here. So you go into applications, and then you go down here and you go add, and then you put in your name, so you'd enter SSW Link Auditor or your company name or your application. Then you would um, click on OK, you go next, and then um, this will pop up. And at this point in time, you put in your URL for your login page on our link auditor slash login or wherever it is. And uh, you need to copy this, um, see this, this good? You need to copy that because you're gonna need to put in your web.config in your Visual Studio app. So just be aware of that. Then um, at that point in time, uh, what else do you need to do? So we're on the business app. So we're in that business app, we then uh, go into the keys and in this key you need to create this secret key um, and you need to select a duration. This is what's used to communicate with Azure Active Directory. You might want to notice that you can, you, it says here the key value will be displayed after you save it. So you have to save then you get it and then it disappears forever. So you just have to just be aware of how that works. Um, so you click on add application uh, you click on Power BI service, that's just one of the services you're giving it. When you click on that guy, you come in here and you give it permissions. You'll see we've just given it all permissions. See all that list there, all permissions. And now Azure is completely configured um, and we need our app. Um, we need to open up our app and make sure that key is in there. And then we need to have a method that will send all our data via uh, JSON. Uh, into there. So let's, let's go ahead and do that, that's those steps. We're going to open up Visual Studio and we're going to add a new get package. That new get package is called Microsoft Identity Model .ad. You just have to add that one. All right, you're still, you're still with us. 
<laughs> just. <laughs> All right. So we add this NuGet package, and now we need a method to uh, authenticate the users. So just be aware that you need a, a method here. Um, uh, basically, you you will just redirect back to um, to the login passing the query string. And at that point in time, after you've added this one method, the user, you can go and test it now, and this part will pop open. This part will pop open and you can sign in. Now what you need to do is handle that response and then send the data with the key. So you need a method to do that. So you have a, a method here to, do, um, the, to get the auth code that comes back from Azure, and then part, persist the authentication token and then redirect. And finally, we need to send the data to the web API and that, uh, I guess the, the guts of it here, is to upload the data into the new data set and send as JSON. See this line here? Data set slash, you know, that's, that's kind of the guts of it here. So, uh, Yuli, if you could hand out evals, or we are almost at the end. There's a, there's a, a few more minutes to go. But um, that is the guts of everything that we need to do for our link auditor, and we've done that a few times. So at that point in time, after you've written this code and passed all the data, the user will see this, fields. Now, that at this point in time, I, if you follow, these are e the exact steps we, we did, but this is only going to work for your own organization's um, it's only going to work within your organization at this point. I want it to work for everyone in the world. So how would I go ahead now and en enable multi-tenant? I want it everywhere, not just with our own AD. Does anyone know? Can you just have like an account? Sorry? Can you have like an account accessing your data and then from there on multi-tenant? Ah, bingo. You just need to come through here and you need to... Um, uh, basically just turn this on and when you turn this on um, you will see that now any organization can log on and press accept so at that point in time that's basically the only thing worth changing I'm going to tell you um, our thoughts uh, the the devs have um, implemented this a few times on a few different um, sites now there's a couple of things I'm going to tell you the web API is a very simple REST service, very easy to work with. Um, you can send data from any application that can make a HTTP request. It is not all roses. That is a very simple set of uh, methods. And there is essentially, I'm over-exaggerating this, but there's essentially four API methods. You can create, add data, clear data, and change schema. That is not good enough. You need the ability to add relations. Remember that screen? We, we, we don't have a program, progr programmatic way of adding relations. Okay? We don't have a programmatic way of adding reports or dashboards. So that's why I have to give them this dodgy... Oh, sorry, where is it? Where is it? Oh, that's, that's why I could only give them the right-hand side with the list of fields. I wanted to give them a beautiful... What, what did, um, what does he, what, what did um, James Phillips say? Um, the yeah, the, yeah, the wow factor. I can't give him the wow factor. He gave all his users a wow factor. I can't give mine the wow factor. Anyway, I'm sure it's uh, coming soon. Which brings us to the last stuff, which is the roadmap. Now, the roadmap. I don't know their exact roadmap, but I can hazard plenty of guesses from having lots of conversations. And um, I'm, I'm on a regional director list at Microsoft, so I have plenty of times where I complain and um, they're, they're pretty good at um, kind of taking all the feedback and as you, I keep seeing improvements all the time um, and that's pretty good. But So I'm going to tell you um, what I know so far. Now, they've acquired DataZen, all right? So they made DataZen free if you have Enterprise. So if you have an Enterprise SQL Server, that's a pretty good deal. You can just go and install it. Now you've got another server, but you've got an on-premise one. I think that's pretty cool. It was very expensive. It was very, very, very expensive. Yeah, way more expensive than any Microsoft uh, guy would normally think. And now it's free. So they bought it and they made it free. Are you going to explain what the data server does? Uh, 
Oh, well, it's, it's essentially... Um, they give you the environment XAML and you publish to your data XAML server and it serves any mobile or any interface by rendering the specifics of the platforms. It's a very powerful on-premise yeah, server. Very expensive. Yes. Do you know how expensive it was? Uh, if you only can request quotations, so yeah. once you requested the quotation, it was something with claim rates of $80,000 for a small enterprise. Yes. And well, that's cheaper than what I've heard. You no, know, it's it's per users. It's right. Per users. Yeah. So it was way out of the league of most um, people. It's a very serious product, great on um, great mobile solutions, uh, and that. But you know what it kind of does is it kind of complicates things, because you know now we saw that on per premise and we got this up in the cloud. And when you when you're a company like Microsoft and you acquire lots of companies, you end up with a bit of a legacy solution that you've got to clean up. And so that's what they're all working on now. So they, they've bought it and just given it to us, and then they start doing all this cleanup work. Now, they are going to release SQL Server 2016. It's got lots of stuff about data. Who cares about that? But it's got cool reporting stuff. Um, I am uh, I'm happy that they're all awake. But they've got to tie all this stuff together. Data Zen, um, we've just talked about a very expensive product, which you now can install on server. So now, potentially on server, you're going to have three things for reporting. For reporting. You're going to have SharePoint, you have data Zen, you're going to have reporting services, three different servers running, even in a small company. Um, all right, so the cool stuff is, is it's on-prem. It's, it's got great iOS, Android, and Windows Phone clients. It's HTML5. You can embed these dashboards into apps. Um, and now it's free, essentially, for enterprise customers. That's pretty good. What's bad? Well, what's bad is it's on-premise. Okay? Um, and you, here's the big thing that sucks is you can't publish Power BI dashboards to data Zen. You can't make those Power BI and say, oh, I want that on-premise too. Okay? Uh, and I'm going to hope that that's not a long-term limitation. All right, let's talk about reporting services. Reporting services is a huge release. Okay, huge release if you've been in this world for report. Who's built reporting services reports? Okay, all right, most of us. Um, so, they now, it, it was weird HTML that they did. It was terrible. It didn't work on a bloody iPad. There's lots of frustrations around it. You couldn't email it properly. It now has custom theme, themes using CSS, all right? They finally know about normal HTML. All right. Um, you've got templates and themes like Power BI, which is good, uh, and it's responsive. Hallelujah. All right. That's really good. And there's lots and lots more. There's parameters that are improved, layout, hierarchy support. There's lots of cool stuff. And Power View is included with, reporting, uh, with uh, reporting services. So if you think about the stack right now as it stands, this is what we have. We have all these clients. We've got Excel, Power BI Designer, Report Builder, Data Zen, and Excel that goes to SharePoint. Okay? One Excel goes online, and one Excel goes to our, our SharePoint on-premise. Now this is terrible. If you look at Power BI here, you've got all these clients, and then you've got data Zen. If you put that in the mix, you've got these other clients. So this is a lot of stuff they've got to look after. Well, if you think about what they've just done, okay, they've just they've made Power BI live and it's a general availability release. When they did that, this is what happened. This top part, look at the top part, disappeared. So that part's gone. So they're kind of starting to clean this up already. Now, what will probably happen is they'll probably kill this bit too because they won't have Excel publishing to your intranet when SharePoint 2016. I need to look at how that works with um, SharePoint 2016 preview just coming out. But I'm going to guess they're not having Excel go to SharePoint anymore. They're going to have Excel go to either Power BI or Data Zen and reporting services. So that would be good when that's done. If they can kill this, can I draw on this thing? No, you can't, you can't draw. How do I? Bottom left. All right, I am obviously not uh, good in, uh, oh, I can get a pen. Oh, wow. So they need to kill that. That's civil anyway. We don't need that. We need this talking to this so that, so you have reports that you've done in reporting services that you can use inside Power BI, that'd be good. They need to kill all this, and I'm going to, they'll kill all that and make all that into there. Now, if you notice, 
I've had these installed for a while. You keep getting updates to Power BI, but you don't keep getting updates to these data Zen apps. So it feels like all this functionality or all the investments are going into these. So eventually when they put everything from here into here, you won't probably need these. Who knows? We can all um, hazard some guesses, but you, we know that this is cool, we know that this is cool, and we know that that would be good if somehow they put that together. You know, then we've only got one server. Um, now we just got to, I don't know. This, I think that they could kill that get data tab. You know the get data tab that we have in Excel? If they do everything they can with this Power BI designer, then you, I asked Greg Lowe, I said to Greg Lowe, and he knows way more about all the data stuff than me, would you be pissed off if Microsoft one day got rid of get data if everything is in Power BI? And he said no. I thought he'd say yes, because he offers, he's always you know, complaining about how decisions are made. He said he'd be quite happy. So then, then we don't need this guy. Thank you, because we'll do all ad hoc reporting there. We won't need that guy. Gee, that'd be a nice simple solution if we just had that, that, and that. Yeah, there we go. Looks easy. Yes, Marlon. The difference between the data Zen server and SQL Server reporting service and the Power BI is where they're hosted, right? The in terms of output, between in terms one? of final output later on, I can have my data Zen server on premises. Yes, you I can, can never have my Power BI on premises, right? You can't put Power BI on premise, but what if they rename data Zen to Power, Power BI, BI on premise? Yeah, that'd so be a good name, wouldn't it? That would then, be. And if it, it was, if it was consistent and you know reports worked on both places, everything would be pretty cool. Anyway, enough of, um, enough of hand-waving uh, ideas, but they've got a massive team to do stuff, so that's good. All right, let's move along. These are my suggestions to the team anyway. So I want you to give me an embed code. You know how you go to YouTube, you put a video up there, you copy the embed code, put in your web, you put in your blog or wherever you want to put it, it works. I want them to do the same thing. I want to get an embed code for a specific part of that report and put it on my blog and say, Hey, I've analysed the cricket scores out there and I've put it here and it's all good. Can you use a screenshot? Huh? Can you, just use a screenshot? you can use a screenshot, but you know, you want it to be potentially live and updating and no. things. Yeah, so that wouldn't do. Would you like to put a screenshot of a YouTube video, Yuli? Okay. So, I want them to give me actions like reporting services. I want them to, um, you know, on click, I go to the CRM record. I want them to give me drill down. That's, that's actually, I should cross it out. It's, they've already done that, and that, that came out in the last update. Um, I want connectivity between reporting services and Power BI. Uh, I'll wait for SQL Server 16 before I whinge anymore. Uh, yeah, they could combine those. Um, this is a big one. This is a big one, and I don't know how they're gonna solve this. I wanna support dev test production. I wanna do a report, I want to put it onto a test server, get it passed, and deploy it. I want the team to su support good ALM practices. I want them to, when I'm looking at a, at a dashboard and reports, I want a button there that says, take this offline with a PBIX and open up PowerView. Power, what is it called? Power BI desktop thing. Yeah, I want, uh, that's really important. I want that because here is the problem right now, and this is, this is a really bad thing. There is no version control. Uh, I guess you can put it into, you know, into TFS or Git or whatever. They are files. But take this scenario. Uh, I have a few developers working on reports. You're working on a PBIX, and I'm working on a PBIX. Um, I publish that to Power BI. I go away for a week, and uh, this guy publishes up a new version. And now this guy comes back and makes some modifications to his reports and publishes it up. It clobbers that guy's stuff. That's just shocking. What, what should happen is when you have the PBIX thing, you can kind of do a refresh that pulls the latest schema down from Power BI. That's really important, that stuff. I, don't, I, I hope they solve that. Every time I make a change would be even better if they gave me save changes as a script some script file. I want to make some changes and save that as a script. So everything is a script file and then I can replay all scripts. A little bit like .sql files in SQL Server. Please tell me that performance point is RIP so I don't have to keep talking to my customers about performance point because it's just an unnecessary confusion. They won't do that but I'd like them to say that. Um, 
Power BI on premise, please. Well, we've got data in now, so you know, they've got to work that out. Um, yep, I just want to install one report server, not well, at the moment I'm installing three. That would be nice if it's just one. Anyway, you can make all your complaints and learn about what everybody else says because this pop product is super popular. If you go, if you go to support.powerbi.com, they've got a user voice site up, they've got heaps and heaps of everybody's suggestions. They're, they are very responsive. They've got um, YouTube channels, they've got Twitter accounts, they've got Facebook channels. They're doing everything like a normal startup would do. They are looking good. And then you've got you know, James Phillips and Ariel and all these guys who, ha who are actively tweeting. You can, you know, they're just transparent. So I'm really impressed. Anyway, resources. Um, you can go to the Power BI Center. We've got, we've got our rules to better Power BI. Um, you've got the Power BI blog. Oh, that is awesome. And that's where you can find some of the things I've said are wrong because they keep updating. They're very, their blog posts are long and clear. Obviously, the best thing they've got is the REST API to use. And I know tonight has been a long presentation, but we went through the history, we did the additions, we went up and running um, for the, you know, Mary the receptionist, then we did, got, did the Power BI, sorry, the Power user, and then we did the, you know, the developer and what's involved in that. And we've had a great experience. We've talked about the roadmap. Hopefully you got plenty of, um, value, uh, fill in your evals and we will have some pizza. Thank you.